<laughs> Welcome, everybody, to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. I'm in full Alan Moore cosplay. I got the long hair. You know that picture? Uh, where is it? Where's my watchman? There's a picture of him. It's like this picture of him just like sullen with long hair. I need a bunch of rings, though. I don't have my little my Renaissance rings. But today we're talking about Alan Moore's Promethea. And let me say this. I read this when it first came out. So, Alan Moore had this brilliant idea, American's Best Comics, ABC. When you start a publishing company, you always want to start with early letters. If you look at Diamond or Previews, you'll see tons of companies with A's, even AAs or AAA and all that kind of stuff because the first thing people want to look at in the alphabet, they look through the catalog through the alphabetically. So, if you have a company called Xenotrope, or Xenoscope, or any of those things, you're getting the end of the the buyer's like money. So always start in the beginning. So he made America's Best Comics. A little ironic, a little ironicness there because um, irony, because he's not freaking American. But with that launch, had four titles: Tomorrow Stories, Tom Strong, Top Ten, and Promethea. And out of those four, I've always loved the most top 10. I love this parallel universe, police procedural drama. Um, I wish it was longer. It was only, I think, 12 issues. And then they did a couple spinoffs. But I loved it. I just love the, the, the whole idea of it. And I love Gene Ha's work and Xander Cannon. So I'm a big fan of that. And I had read some of these, but I had been trying to collect all of them to bind them because I buying books, right? So here's like Sandman Bound, and here's Doctor Doom Bound. And if you want, I can do a whole episode just on bound books. Here's, here's, you know, um, what is this? Uncanny X-Men 225 to 250, right? So this is like all the comics bound up in a nice, happy book. And I love this. I love these freaking things. Um, so I was good to the same thing for Promethea. But these just came out. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just buy this. So I bought volume one. There's three volumes. I'm going to order the next two probably tomorrow because I really, really enjoy this. In fact, I would say this is his best of the ABC comics, um, which got bought by Wildstorm and then, of course, DC when DC bought them, which really put a big ass thorn in the side of Alan Moore to the point where he was so pissed off about it. He he just stopped. He was like, screw this. I made this deliberately to not have to work with DC because of the way they host me with Watchmen. So F them. And now suddenly I'm making comics and it's for DC. It was it was a bridge far too far to cross even for Karen Berger and all these other wonderful editors that worked for him with years. He was like, I'm out. Peace out. Luckily, we got Promethea. Let me tell you about Promethea. First off, Alan Moore, but you must mention the co-creator, J.H. Um, Williams III and Mick Gray, the inker. These two guys, uh, Williams III is just brilliant in this. He, um, the page compositions, and I'll show you. I'll, sh I'll, we have to. I cannot not show you how each of these double page spreads, almost the whole story is double page spreads, uh, with a couple exceptions. And they're just, the design is fabulous. Just page, just the design, the page composition is just, is just freaking, I can't think of a better page composition than this guy. Even Alex Toth doesn't do this stuff. Alex Toth is panel compositions, and yeah, there's a page, you know, movement, but this guy designs them where these all could be posters. That's just amazing. But Promethea is, is the book that is erudite. This is a book that is esoteric. I'm going to title this Promethea, the Esoteric Comic by Alan Moore. I mean, this is like his thesis about magic, about mystery schools, right, about... Uh, Eastern philosophy, the tarot, um, the chakras, all those kind of like the cabal, the Kabbalah, all that kind of stuff, Tree of Life, that um, 
we learn about in, in different kind of like Golden Dawn, Freemasonry, all those kind of things, which I'm a Freemason, so I kind of am into some of those things. Uh, he's, he, he's, it's in here. He explains it. He breaks it down. And it's all couched in this kind of superhero story. But it's more than a superhero story. It's like a, it's like a manual. It's, I think it's going to teach me how to do magic. I mean, I think it really, I think when, when I'm, when I'm done with all three volumes, I think it's kind of like your manual to like, to use in the world and, and to learn about the border between the physical world and spiritual world. And it's really freaking cool. This is also a book that I would give to people and give especially to females, to girls. This would be a book I would give my wife. Now, the only other books I've given my wife to read is this series, which we haven't talked about this yet, but we need to, is Fables, brilliant book, okay? You got it. If you don't, if you have a wife or a girlfriend or a whoever, or someone who doesn't read comics, fables, dude. Fables. Uh, the other one would be maybe blankets. This is right there. I'm not gonna pull this out, but yeah, blankets, fables. There's only a couple. Uh, one girl wanted to read Mouse. I thought that was fine. I mean, you know, Mouse is Mouse is my favorite book, so of course you can read Mouse. But um, this is a very gr this is a great book for anybody who's interested in magic the tarot, any of that kind of stuff, and who's like, maybe not into comics so much, but likes to learn things, and it's, it's freaking good, it's, it, it's good, um, yeah, I, it's my favorite book, I read it all today, I was just like, you have to concentrate, this isn't something, you don't do this while you're watching TV, you gotta pay attention to this, you gotta learn this, and even some of this I need to go back and reread, um, but this is a brilliant book. Why don't we flip the camera over and I'll even share with you some of the visuals I'm talking about. But uh, if you just want to stop here and say, yeah, go buy this book, I would say use the link below in the description to buy this book, buy volume. I will review also book two and three. Basically, the gist is this. Um, Promethea is a real character uh, that was created back in pulp, pulp uh, book times. And uh, this character has been kind of like come off and on publication through different uh, writers. And Alan Moore grabbed it and is using that as a way to tell the story that the imagination world, right, similar to the spiritual world, which we have, the imagination world where she lives and her different incarnates live by the various writers who kind of like molded them their way, uh, need a new vessel, need a new avatar. And so this is a young college girl, kind of a geeky chick, who's a writer, and she becomes kind of possessed in a way with the spirit of Promethea and kind of like stumbles her way through understanding magic and understanding like tantric sex and understanding all these different elements of, of the imagination world. And uh, it's really freaking cool. And um, yeah, it's just freaking cool. Let's just go look at it right now. Come on, stop playing around. Okay, folks, are you ready for uh, Promethea Book One? Let's chat about it. Look at this. Isn't this nice? This little, like, white and gold cover. It's kind of a nice little show. Too. Look at that. Ooh, not that party. It's kind of cool. Okay, but this is about J.H. William III's page design. Okay? And like I said before, almost every page is. It, it's actually it's actually visually overwhelming to be honest it's there's times when there's just so much in the art so much going on visually all the colors happening that it becomes difficult to just like process okay there's so much going on it takes a while to read um, but you can see the art is top notch. Now, this was made like in 2000, 1999, 2000, 2021, uh, 2000 to 2004 or something like that. So this is like, this is kind of a nice, nice page here. This is 
old, but it feels very modern. It is very well done. These are great panels, great inserts coming out, the close-ups. This is all really well designed. And then he's got these little moment design things in here, the sun, the moon, um, that is really great. Some of this is a little conventional, just a nine panel grid, but he does a nine panel grid and he shifts it over. So then you could put the sun here with this little, little checker design. So even that is different, right? Than just your normal nine panel grid. So there's stuff like that, which, which just, just bumps up the, the quality, you know, the thought process. He's not just correct. Now I'll show you the script too, because a lot of this could be more, although I don't know if he like talks about adding these elements to the story, but um, more is very detailed in his scripts. But there's some panels that, there's some pages that just, just really sing, sing out. I mean, this is nice when he, when they go to the immateria or the imag imagineria, whatever it's called, uh, just the panel, look all these just beautiful organic panel borders. Look at this. This is just really cool, right? Have you ever seen panels come out like that? Nope, you haven't. You haven't seen this before. This is like, this is cool. Very fun, very organic. Okay, these fun little borders. He's going to do that a lot in this book. Um, and we go farther, and then we go into some real, this is, okay, so this is a script. This is like Alan Moore's script, so look at that. That's the text for the description of a panel, okay? And it's all the panels like this. It is hardcore, detailed, Alan Moore. He doesn't like draw a thumbnail, but he might as well, because it's definitely clearly in his mind. Clearly. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's that. Uh, this is where they're going through the tarot. So each page goes through the tarot. And this is pretty dense. This is pretty heady stuff um, to read. But but again, this is like a manual. I think this is a magic manual. And this is fun because this story is all done sideways. So that's kind of a... So they do little gimmicks and tricks and stuff. This is one all about tantric sex. Look at this one, for example. You know, you have the... Um, oh, what's the symbol? What's the name of the symbol with the snake eating itself? Uh, I forgot. Anyway, there's a name for it. But look at this beautiful, it's going through the snake, the dialogue, going through the different chakras too, through the body. Just really cool idea, really cool. Here too, these beautiful flowers as they're making love and experimenting stuff. You know, just look at these, these compositions. The chalice, talking about the woman is the chalice and the holy grail. Things like that. Uh, just really neat design. But he does this all over the place. It's just every page is a double page spread with these great, great. And, and it's not just the page composition. These panels are really well done as well. The change of position, the change in uh, depth and size of figure. I mean, stuff is great. That's all I'm going to say. It's amazing. So... If you haven't read Promethea, this is my favorite. This has to be my favorite. It is brilliant on every level. Uh, just a craftsman of a book. So there you go, guys. Have a good one. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful life. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe like it if you want. Check out all my other stuff. If you want to see what I do when I'm not doing these videos, go check out my Patreon. Go see what's up there. Thanks, guys. Bye.